wir kommen nun äh, zum, äh, vom äh, künstlerischen zum wissenschaftlichen Teil dieser Veranstaltung. Ähm, ich äh, darf sagen, dass ich insbesondere sehr, sehr dankbar bin, dass äh, Frau Professor Kummer sich bereit erklärt hat, äh, die Laudatio äh, zu dem Preis äh, von äh, Dr. Carlos äh, Salazar zu halten. Ich weiß, äh, dass es eine Sache ist, einen Preis zu gewinnen. Das ist fantastisch und es bedarf äh, sehr viel Arbeit. Auf der anderen Seite ist es auch sehr viel Arbeit und bedarf sehr viele äh, Inspirationen, eine Laudatio zu halten. Und Frau Kummer bekommt nicht mal einen Preis dafür. Äh, Umso mehr freuen wir uns da, äh, darüber, dass Frau Kummer sich bereit erklärt hat, diese Bürde auf sich zu nehmen, die sie, glaube ich, gerne trägt. Und äh, ich möchte bitten, Frau Kummer nun die Laudatio zu halten. So, das habe ich jetzt davon. Uh, so, it's up to me as a representative of the selection committee uh, to kind of say why we actually chose uh, Carlos as the award winner today. And that's actually a pleasure for me. <clears throat> Systems biology thrives on the interplay of experimental and theoretical work. And there's a very famous quotation uh, saying something about experimentalists and theoreticians in biology. Some of you might have uh, heard about that. Um, it's sometimes falsely assigned to George Oster, but actually it was said by Armon Kasia Kaczalski uh, more than 20 years ago. And he said, biologists can be divided into two classes, experimentalists who observe things that cannot be explained, and theoreticians who explain things that cannot be observed. <laughs> and in, in the past, this was actually all too true, to be honest, or actually often true. And we still sometimes suffer from the results of this kind of interplay, which was not very tight. However, this actually doesn't hold if you look at the work of uh, Carlos Salazar, who of course is a theoretician. Um, but he is a theoretician with a very tight link to experimental real systems. And I think that's something which is already quite outstanding in, as such. I actually asked him, uh, just before this ceremony started, um, why he, a trained chemist, actually was uh, studying chemistry in Havana, Cuba, why he switched to biophysics. And he said that already when he did uh, basically his degree in chemistry, uh, he discovered the beauty of doing computational work on physical chemical uh, things, and he was intrigued by the possibility to apply that also to biosciences. And that's actually quite a good uh, reason to do things like that. <laughs> Not to discover actually the beauty of mathematics, which is a beauty in itself, but really to find out some new things about biology and biological systems. And therefore he decided uh, to move to Germany and actually pursue a biophysics degree in Berlin, which he did very successfully. That's also where he received his PhD in biophysics. And biophysics, as such, um, in my experience, is an excellent background for systems biology because you already uh, get to hear a lot of interdisciplinary coursework. You study biosciences and physics at the same time. You might know that physicists are able of anything, so I mean, can do everything and anything. And, <laughs> and so, I mean, that's actually um, a solid background. But you still, of course, have to do something with this background to make successful work. Carlos has dedicated most of his research to understand how uh, signaling systems in the cell work and how especially phosphorylation cycles um, can, for example, encode different information, how they can trigger responses in the cell. And this is a very complicated uh, system as such. And it's one of the ones where I think it's very obvious that without computational work we will not understand it completely. You can do as many experiments as you want, but I mean you probably are not going to understand it 100% without the aid of a computer. And that's, I mean again, that's a very good motivation to do computational work. Not because it's fun to play at a computer, not because <laughs> mathematics is fun and you can find some, some very clear solutions of some very difficult equation system, but really to understand biology in a better way. 
And we, as the selection committee, we think that Carlos Salazar did an excellent job in that. He really was close to real system. He always, I mean, refers to real parameters to something that is, I mean, realistic or not something out in the air. He's by now the author of more than a dozen uh, scientific publications. And what is quite outstanding about it is that he is almost always first author uh, of these publications. Some of them are really appearing in very high ranking journals. Given his age, uh, that's quite exceptional. And I mean, given the scope of the publications and where they are cited, you can already see the impact of his work in systems biology. So, I don't want to make it too long and I leave everything on science to the really authorized person to talk about these scientific results it would be kind of ridiculous if I start to repeat what he actually in detail what he has achieved. I mean he can do it by himself much better and I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs>